Carlos Kidman here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to work with environment variables in Python. We'll be using the python.env library to do this, but let's just jump right in. So away we go. I'm already inside of a Python project, but this should work for anything that you're working on. So the first thing we need to do is actually install python.env. Now, I'm using poetry, and so for me, it's just poetry add python.env. If you're using something else like pip, for example, then just do pip install python.env, same thing. Now that you have that, you should be ready to follow along with me. I have a test environment variables uh, test file here, and I'm gonna be doing everything inside of this. The two libraries that I really need here would be the OS library, which we're going to use to get environment variables, and then .env itself, so we can load .env. Once you call this function, it loads everything from the .env file. So let's take a look at that. I created a .env file at my workspace root right here, and then I added two environment variables just as examples. One called the access key with the value of foo, and one called secure UID with the value of bar. Now, environment variables are a great way for you to store secrets. So things that uh, you don't want the world to know about, things like these access keys or security IDs or private connections to different databases or maybe your AWS account or whatever it might be, you might wanna put these things in your environment variables. Your continuous integration, aka CI pipelines, also use environment variables, so it's good to have them in here. However, make sure that you include them in your gitignore file because you do not want to send these up to the cloud. That would defeat the whole purpose of having environment variables to begin with. You want these things to be kept secure because they're secrets or they're very sensitive information you don't want to share with anyone else. So now that we've installed python.env, We've created our .env file and we've included it in our gitignore, ready to start using it. In this test file, I'm calling load.env, but you don't have to do this in every single test file. You really only need to run this command once. So if you have something like a settings.py file or a framework.py file, you only need to call that command one time. It'll load the .env for all of your application and then you can access any of those environment variables anywhere in your code. In this test, we're using os.environment.get, the access key, and the value is gonna be stored in this variable called key. Do the same thing on line 14 for our UID, and then our test simply asserts that key and UID have values. Now, one thing we don't want to do is actually check for the specific thing, right? We don't want to do this, because again, that defeats the whole purpose of environment variables. Instead, we can just check that key and UID have a value, and that should be enough for this test case. The nice thing about having a test like this is it tells you which environment variables your code is dependent on and lets you know whether you have it set up correctly or not. That way, if you were to add something and then send it up to your CI pipeline, the pipeline would fail if you haven't put those environment variables in the pipeline yet. Or if a developer pulls down your code and tries to run your tests, it would fail if they don't have the .env file set up yet either. So you can see that this test gives you a lot of feedback and it's really fast. So let's put a breakpoint here on line 15 and let's debug it to see that key and UID actually get the values we care about. Let me save the file real quick and click debug. And there you go, sure enough, key has the value of foo, and UID has the value of bar, just like we set in our env file. So, one last recap. Step one is to install python.env. Step two is to add your .env file, usually at the workspace root. Step three is to then add it to the gitignore, because you don't want to send that up to the cloud. Number four, call the load.env function. Remember, you only really need to do this once, so usually something like a settings.py file that exists at the workspace root as well. And then lastly, you can use those environment variables using something like os.environment.get. With that, we're all done. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section below. 
Otherwise, please like and subscribe because that does a whole bunch to support us here at QAP. And if you really like to as well, I would love to chat with you if you want to hit me up on Twitter at Carlos Kidman. Thanks for watching and have a quality day. Okay, bye!